The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship this evening. Uh, I only have one thing to tell you about this evening, and that is, is when we're doing the Eucharist, it's going to sound slightly different. Because since I've come here during a Bible study, someone said, why don't you ever speak Hebrew? So we can hear the words that Jesus would have said. So when it comes to giving thanks tonight, you will hear how the Jews give thanks for both the bread and for the wine. Please rise. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the three days reconciled with God and with one another. Amen. Please kneel as you are able. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. first reading is from the 12th chapter of Exodus, beginning with the first verse. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. 
You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I shall pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival of the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tonight's second reading is from the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas son of Simon Iscariot, to hand him over. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, 
had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. So we've walked together through these 40 days. And if you remember, these 40 days begin with us saying something like this. We confess before you and the whole company of heaven that we have sinned by our own fault. By our fault and by our most grievous fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We've had time to think, to pray, to reflect on our faith. And I often wonder what this 40 days was like for each of you. I encouraged you this week at the beginning to do your best to carry Christ with you throughout the week. Keep Him in your thoughts, your minds. But now we are entering the holiest time of the church. And we remember three days that changed everything. Hopefully, those three days change us forever as well. I've spent the day just wondering what the disciples must have been thinking. Did they have any clue at all, even though they had been told what was coming? When you read the scriptures, it seems like they weren't really listening. And any time I come to that conclusion, I ask myself, do we listen any better than what the Lord is telling us? How would they be surprised by the events about to happen? And they begin this night. And they don't stop through the night. Because later on, Judas leads them to the garden where Jesus was praying. Jesus is arrested, taken to Caiaphas, taken to Pilate, taken to Herod Antipas and back to Pilate. And then convicted, sentenced to die. Jesus came for one reason 
And that's to announce the kingdom of God. He came in compassion. He came in love. And I wonder if I should be surprised that humanity's response to that love looked like it did. For instead of accepting and receiving that love, they killed God in the flesh. Not because God was weak, but because God was completely loving and was willing to submit to anything that they would do to Him. I know through the years I have always tried to distance myself from what happened to Jesus. But in truth, I cannot do so. Because it's not only sin that put Him there, but it's also my sins that put Him there. We as humans like to have somebody to blame. And most of the time we want someone other than us to blame. But I know deep in my heart that any time in my life I have ever knowingly or unknowingly sinned, I too, like Judas, like Peter, we were betraying the Lord. Every time. But thank God this is Jesus' response to us. Instead of anger, we get compassion. Instead of retribution, we get forgiveness. And I don't know that I can ever fully wrap my mind around that reality. Because I'm called to do the same myself. No matter what happens, no matter what occurs. I am called to live a life filled completely with forgiveness. And the reason I am called to do that is because Jesus lived that life first. You hear him say tonight in the gospel, I have set an example for you that you should do as I have done. And the amazing thing is this, if you read the Bible closely, it says, and you are blessed if you do these things. So there is our encouragement. There is where our goals are set. Not to just say, I believe in Jesus. I know He's the Son of God. But to truly follow in the path in which He leads. For it's in that path that we are blessed. And another word for blessed is happy. If you want to know where happiness is in this life, it's simple to find it. It's in following Christ. I'm always thankful for every blessing that we're given. And if you look around this room tonight, you can look around. There's not many more people here than were with Jesus that night. There were the twelve in our Lord. But look at what God did with those few people. Look at how God changed the world with those few people. And I encourage you tonight and every day to look at what God will do to change the world through you. Amen. At this time, 
we're going to obey what the Lord asked of us. And if you feel so led to come forward and have your feet washed, you can go to either place and we will follow the Lord.
Before we continue, I'll share a little story with you. I know sometimes people are comfortable with doing this, sometimes they're not. And I was at a church in Pennsylvania where we did this for the very first time. None of them had experienced it. And I wasn't sure whether anybody would participate at all. But amazingly, some of the people who first seemed to push back against it were the first people forward. And slowly the people came forward. And I told them, I said, after the service, I'd like to talk to you to hear your experience of what just happened to you. Remembering the words of the Lord, do you know what I've just done to you? And one of the older gentlemen said, Pastor, I feel cleaner than I've ever been in my life. So it's not about just having our feet washed. It's about being served in the name of the Lord. Church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit from the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory of the Lord God, the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and in the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. 
trusting in Jesus who gave his life for the world. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Kneel as you are able. God who kneels to wash our feet, gather your church around the world during this holy week. Humble the powerful and lift up any who are marginalized. Renew our faith and make us bold in service and love to our neighbors. Merciful God. God who blesses the grain of the soil and the fruit of the vine. Inspire in us a reverent care for the earth. Sustain fields, gardens, and wild places that all people are fed and every living thing flourishes. Merciful God. God, whose greatest commandment is love, guide all who govern by the principle of love transform unjust human systems that oppress some for the gain of others. Restore communities as places of justice and concern for those who are vulnerable. Merciful God. God who was betrayed, comfort people everywhere who have suffered abuse at the hands of someone they knew and trusted. Heal the bodies, minds, and hearts of victims of exploitation. Help all in pain to know that you are near. Merciful God. God who sits at the table with us, grant the joy of your presence to people celebrating First Communion today and to all who share the meal. Strengthen communities of faith in grace and courage. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We ask prayers for those on our prayer list and those we name before you in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God who brings new life out of death, we pray with thanks for the lives of those who have joined the communion of saints. In our holy meal, connect us to the faithful who have gone before us and nourish us as your people living today. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, loving God, for the sake of the one who loved us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen.
are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with the hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O mighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, saying, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Blessed are you, the Lord, our God, King of the universe. Hamosi lekum min ha'eretz. Who brings forth bread from the earth. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and gave thank, thanks, saying, Baruch Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, the Lord our God, King of the universe. Bore Peri HaGafen. Who brings forth fruit from the vine and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, 
We proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, and let the church say, Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.